I recently made a video titled Every World Record Speedrun in Every Mario Game, where I analyzed how each runner was able to accomplish these amazing times by taking full advantage of optimized routes, game breaking exploits, and just straight up glitches. Now, that video focused solely on Mario console games, and I got a lot of requests to focus this video on handheld Mario games. My name is Copycat, and welcome to every world record speedrun in every Mario handheld game. Just like before, I'll only be focusing on any percent runs, and I'll be going through each game, giving you an idea of the advanced techniques used by these speedrunners. Now, before I get this video started, I hope you all subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell button to stay notified when I upload new videos. Starting off this video, we're going to look at the first handheld Mario game, Super Mario Land for the original Game Boy. As of recording this video, Callum Bell holds the world record at a time of 12 minutes and 25 seconds using a Game Boy emulator on his computer. Now he's held the world record for 2 years, so it's safe to say his techniques are probably the best to look at. Level 1-1 requires you to be extremely efficient, ensuring you know when to hard tap A for a big jump, soft tap A for a short jump, and when to bonk off enemies to maintain speed. Level 1-2 is very similar, with only a few difficult platforming parts. Level 1-3 has you dodging a few piranha plants and sphinxes, sphinx? Huh. With some pixel perfect jumps. Nothing too crazy, just be careful as the levels do tend to start very quickly. In terms of precise inputs and timing, level 2-1 is insane as you have to skillfully maneuver through a swarm of Honin, aka Bonefish, and there are many instances in this level where you have to pixel perfectly jump off their head, or just narrowly pass underneath them. There's one specific technique that he does here where he just waits for a split second, then bounces off two enemies' heads. Let's just say level 2-2 is a lot more chill in comparison. 2-3 is an underwater, side-scrolling submarine level, which has a very interesting glitch that allows you to skip the boss. Now, I haven't seen too much about this glitch, but what he does do is puts the sub on a brick that hasn't been destroyed, then breaks it just as Mario goes off-screen. Then, the seahorse runs into Mario, which I think automatically kills the boss, ending the level. Now, there's probably a way more detailed way to do this than what I just explained, so if anyone knows any more info on it and why exactly this works, then please leave it in the comments below. Level 3-1 is a bit harder than the rest, as there's two sections where you have to literally stop and wait for the bullet biff, so you can jump off the rock, then use it to get to the next platform. On the third platform, all you need to do is take damage and jump off running across the spikes. In level 3-2, there's a very awkward situation where there are two Sue spiders and one Kumo spider blocking your path. To get past them properly, you'll have to perfectly time your jump so you'll slide off one spider and ever so slightly bunk off it, giving you enough momentum to do the same on the next one. Like before, you'll have to get a mushroom so that you can save vital seconds running across the spike section towards the finish line. World 3-3 isn't as linear of a speedrun, and you'll constantly have to wait for the moving platforms to line up. At the end of the level, you'll need perfect timing to jump off the rock that he yo ho -y? throws to finish the level. 4-1 has a few moments where you have to wait for things, especially for the star, as you can get through the piranha plants. Callum Ball actually misses the star on his first try, so there are actually a few seconds to make up in this speedrun. In level 4-2, you'll have to take a little bit of damage from the piranha plant to get past that part, and wait for one to go back up a pipe. But other than that, and from the help of a star, it's pretty much a straight run. In level 4-3, you can literally just sit in your plane off-screen, and you really don't have to worry about much until the wall section comes into play. In this section, it's a little bit more clear how that glitch from earlier being able to bypass the boss actually sort of works. It seems that in the auto-score levels, if you're up against the wall and you go off-screen, the game will glitch you across the screen so you can essentially teleport to the other side, a la Pac-Man. The easiest way to defeat the final boss of the game is to glitch inside of him by positioning your plane in just the right spot on the screen. I'm not sure if Kalimbal is shooting here or not, but either way the boss dies pretty quickly and he has a world record. The second handheld Mario game that Nintendo released is a sequel titled Super Mario Land 2 – 6 Golden Coins for the Game Boy. 
For the past two years, Oh Dear has held the world record at an astonishing time of 2 minutes, 42 seconds, and 950 milliseconds. Now, anytime I see a world record speedrun this slow, I know there must be tons of glitches involved. The first of these literally takes place in the first level of the game, where you have to use the shell pipe glitch. This is done by throwing a shell against some blocks so that immediately when you enter the pipe, it kills you on the very same frame. When you restart the level, you'll immediately fall right through the floor and reach the finish line because for some reason the developers decided to put it right below the start. After you complete that first level, then head to the macro zone where you perform the same glitch but this time you get killed by a rock thrown by an ant. Instead of going back to that level, next travel to the pumpkin zone and when you start it up you'll fall right through the floor as well. However, this time you'll be taken to what people call Glitch World. In this incredibly weird space, you can quickly beat the level as the end door is located just below the starting area. Now, because you can't control where Mario falls the first time, you'll actually have to complete this glitch again, which you can do in that first pumpkin zone level by taking a mushroom to power up while entering a pipe at the same time. Here, when you restart the level, you can now get to a different part of Glitch World and travel very sketchily through a few pipes and squeeze through some incredibly tight spaces until you reach a very glitched out section. This is where I can only assume that Oh Dear is tricking the game's memory into playing the end credits early, officially completing the speedrun. However, believe it or not, in a task, tool assisted speedrun, where inputs are put into a computer program that runs the game for you, allowing for inhuman motion in gameplay, somehow someone was able to program it to beat the game on the very first level. Either way, Odir's achievement in this game is very impressive, even if it's extremely glitchy. Even though Super Mario 64 DS is very similar to the N64 classic, it's just different enough that it drastically changes how the any% percent speedrun is done. This is because you start off as Yoshi, having to unlock different characters over time. Rupa from Japan holds the world record here with a time of 10 minutes and 35 seconds. To start this run off, you need to take Yoshi to the left of the castle, then traverse from the waterfall towards the grassy hill. There, if you jump onto the really steep section, you'll slide right through the water and trick the game into letting you walk under it through the door. Here, you'll have to ground pound the two pillars to lower the water, then go to the secret painting and enter Shifting Sand Land. You can easily grab the star on top of the pyramid if you bypass the quicksand by long jumping, then rolling up its side. After you get the star, go back into Shifting Sand Land, then immediately exit the level so you can go to the main area of the castle. Here, go to the top right door and use the one star you have to open it. This room holds the unlockable characters, where you can actually clip through the wall and with enough maneuvering in the out of bounds area, get through the locked Mario door early. Once you beat the giant Goomba boss by swallowing the tiny ones behind it, you'll now unlock Mario. Next, you can clip through another part of the wall, which will really put you out of bounds this time and spawn you back outside on the bridge. This will allow you to get to the underwater door section where you need to quickly catch the bunny to get the key. However, the key isn't really what you need, and what you have to do is clip through the wall by forcing Mario to run in between it and the bunny. Once you get out of bounds, you can swim in this area which leads randomly to the basement Bowser fight. Now, I don't think I could ever personally pull this part off, but Rupa has enough skill to parkour really quickly through this level, then defeat the boss. Once he gets that key, he re-enters the level so he can quickly return to the main area. You can now get to the upper part of the castle where you need to capture the bunny once again to get another key. Surprise surprise, you don't actually need this key, you need to use the bunny to again clip through the wall and slide into this really strange out of bounds area that leads all the way to the final Bowser level.
Once again, Rupa pulls up some of the most insane platforming I've ever seen done here, up until the final fight where he destroys Bowser very quickly. Looking at all this footage, I have no idea how people figured out how to do this, but they're probably really insane or just spent hours and hours playing this game. The next original, and not ported, Mario handheld game was released 14 years after Super Mario Land 2 and is new Super Mario Bros. for the Nintendo DS. Glitchman24 holds the world record here with a time of 22 minutes, 44 seconds, and 533 milliseconds. In level 1-1, you'll just have to platform and avoid enemies until you reach the end flagpole. In 1-2, you have to use the blue shell power-up to traverse for most of the level until you reach the end where you have to get to the secret warp pipe which lets you bypass a large section of the world. The next level you'll play is the first World 1 Castle, where you have to platform upwards as quickly as you can, using the blue shell to help you travel a lot faster. When you make it through the first door, there'll be a room where it looks like going through that door is the only exit, but actually there's a secret ending to this level which leads directly to the warp cannon. This cannon brings you all the way to World 5, where level 1 is pretty much just a straight up run where it's efficient to use your blue shell on more straightaway areas. This power up is also necessary for level 5 too, but this time you'll have to do a lot more precise platforming to avoid enemies along your way. There are a few difficult jumps in this level, and Glitchman24 actually messes up a bit here, but recovers well. In level 5-3, you can start off pretty much by jumping your way down the mountain, then once again use your blue shell to get to the end. The World 5 Ghost House is where the next warp cannon is located, but is difficult to platform through as you have to do a combination of wall jumps and blue shell maneuvers. Once you get to the secret flagpole ending, then use that warp cannon to take you all the way to World 8. It's interesting here because Glitchman24 actually loses a lot of time and thinks he might have to reset the game, but decides to continue. 8-1 is pretty simple as you just have to perform some well-timed jumps off enemies towards the end flagpole. And 8-2 is where things start to get interesting as you have to pull off a technique called Fast 8-2. At one very specific portion here, you have to bonk off the pipe then jump upwards towards the next one while doing a pixel perfect wall jump, which will skip a vast portion of the level. You obviously need the blue shell power up to properly pull this one off, and Glitchman24 mentions that achieving this strat in under 5 tries will still save you tons of time. The World 8 Castle is relatively easy as you'll just have to wait for the platforms to align and use that blue shell power up to your advantage. To defeat Bowser Jr, just jump repeatedly on his head which will damage him instantly before he can move. Glitchman24 shaves off an entire 6 seconds doing the 8-2 fast strat and getting a good run through the castle. Level 8-3 is an underwater stage where you literally have to just swim as fast as you can. You can definitely lose loads of time here if you're not careful. 8-4 is just a straight run across the level avoiding some spiders along the way. The final castle of World 8 starts off with you having to travel perfectly across a lava section while swinging off ropes and hitting a few switches along your way. Glitchman24 screws up a bit here so there is some time to be made up. He gets past Dry Bowser pretty easily but is still unsure whether he can make up any time in the volcanic portion of this world. Level 8-5 is a pretty easy run past a few enemies to the end flagpole. In contrast, level 8-6 is an extremely tough level where you have to quickly platform upwards using springs to your advantage to get much higher. As you can see, screwing up during this section is highly likely, so saving time by jumping off the Koopa and getting into the spring is a must. Also, if you don't have the Fire Flower from the previous level, you won't be able to complete this one as quickly. In 8-7, you'll have to use a star to bypass many of the tough enemies, and use your parkouring skills to make it to the end in time. Level 8-8 is very hard, as there's falling rock from the volcano that can easily kill you. You'll have to wait a little bit for the star, then book it to the end just to complete the level. The World 8 Castle 2 has a moving snake section where you can actually bypass a large part of it if you wall jump, then take damage when you run across the spikes. Dying while getting the checkpoint will allow you to respawn, and you can use a fire flower, but you can't really make up any more time here. 
The final level of the game has you dodging a few flames and hitting some switches so you can make it to the final boss battle. The final Bowser battle is pretty simple but crucial to pull off. You'll need to bounce off Bowser Jr's head just over Bowser and end the level completing the game. Glitchman24 freaks out when he gets the world record, but understandable because this speedrun is extremely precise and intense. Yes! Yeah! Yeah! The next handheld Mario game that was released came as a bit of a shock to fans when it was announced, as it's completely different than anything else that had been seen before it. That game was Super Mario 3D Land for the Nintendo 3DS, which combined classic Mario 2D levels with generally 3D Mario aspects. Zelda Cube holds this any percent world record with a time of 54 minutes and 51 seconds, which is a bit longer than the other games in this video, so I'll try to just go through some highlights of this run. Now a huge aspect about going fast in this game, just like in New Super Mario Bros., involves using a power-up, in this case the Raccoon Mario one, where you can literally spin fly through each level. In level 1-1, you can literally fly through it while collecting the giant coins that are used later to unlock different stages and worlds. This also means that there are specific routes in each of these levels, so that by the end of the game you have enough coins to unlock the Bowser boss battle. Level 1-2 also has you tail whip spinning while collecting all three coins along the way, and there's also a warp pipe right at the end that leads you right to world 2. 2-1 is a very interesting skip where you can just continuously wall jump and scale upwards to the flagpole. Of course, grabbing it at the bottom results in the lowest amount of time. 2-2 is really cool as you can bypass any platforming with a Tanuki suit and a few extremely well-timed wall jumps and box off enemies. 2-3 is a multi-layered level where you can jump extremely far from platform to platform, but the hard part here is getting to the coins without making any mistakes. Nothing at all really happens in 2-4. The level 2 airship contains an exploit where you can actually force the camera to auto-scroll faster if you reach the other ships while Mario is far off screen. Level 3-1 is a cannon level, so use it and the propeller box to grab the coins. The easiest way to get to the last one is by going all the way to the top, then entering the door going backwards where it should be just above the thwomp. 3-2 is a level with underwater components, so you just have to be efficient with your movements and make sure you don't get hit by the porca puffer or eel fish. There's nothing super special about 3-3, but you can bypass the question mark box and grab a coin at the same time. 3-4 is probably one of the fastest levels in the game, as you basically can just fly through a large portion of it if you angle your jumps just right and use a few blocks along the way. Nothing really happens in the World 3 airship, and you actually have to wait a few seconds because of the spikes. In 4-1, you can once again use the propeller box to skip a large platforming portion of the level. Level 4-2 is a pure parkouring stage where you have to rely on wall jumps, bounces off the pad, and well-timed tail whips. There's also a warp pipe located at the very top of the level, leading to World 5. Level 5-1 doesn't contain any skips, just avoid getting hit by the spike balls. 5-2 is situated from a top-down view, so you can literally just straight up run through it. You don't have to do 5-3, and 5-4 is a maze-like level, so knowing exactly where to go beforehand will save you a massive amount of time. 5-5 is a propeller box level, and nothing really special happens here. The World 5 Bowser Castle is pretty easy, as you just have to stay ahead of him and just hit the switch as soon as it appears on screen. Level 6-1 really lets me see how broken the Tanuki Suit Spin Tail Whip actually is, as you can bypass hordes of enemies as if they were not there. Some time can be saved in 6-2 if you bypass using the elevators. It isn't a lot, but any time in this long speedrun definitely counts. Level 6-3, the Ghost House, is another maze-like stage where speed is key. In 6-4, the Tanuki Suit allows you to bypass the entire disappearing block section, and Zelda Cube actually makes a few mistakes here. World 6 Airship is another auto-scrolling level which has one skip, where you can get to the final pipe which forces the camera forward. Level 7-1 is by far the shortest in the entire game, as from the start you can just jump right to the end flagpole. 
It's weird because Nintendo's not even trying to make this one difficult. Level 7-2 is relatively easy, as you just have to avoid the spike rollers and chain chomps. Even though Zelda Cube messed up at the end, he still finishes in a good amount of time. You don't have to do 7-3, and you can go right to 7-4, which is a clock-based level, and you can actually skip a large portion of the indoor part with some perfectly timed wall jumps. Nothing really happens in 7-5, but you can skip a few moving platform sections with some well-timed jumps off a few poles and paragoombas. The World 7 airship is just like the other ones, as the auto-scrolled section can be skipped, but it's a lot harder and you have to really practice where to go in this one. I'm not actually kidding, Mario isn't on screen for a long, long, long portion of this, so I'm pretty sure you have to memorize each movement carefully. There's no real viable way to save time in level 8-1, but in 8-2 you can jump across a very long gap into a flame dispenser, skipping most of it. You don't have to do 8-3, and you can go right to 8-4, which is a ghost house level where you can use the blocks and stone walls to skip all of the moving platform parts. In level 8-5, you have to be very precise because there's a lot of red-blue switch platforms, so making a wrong move will definitely lose you a lot of time. The third to last level of the game is the first Bowser's Castle, which can be beaten incredibly easily if you keep killing yourself right at the beginning, so the game offers you a golden tanuki suit and a P-Wing. This golden tanuki suit allows you to take no damage, so you can really just run through the level being as efficient as possible. Once the first Bowser battle is over, level 8-6 opens up and parts of it can be straight up skipped using the tanuki suit once again. Finally, you should reach Bowser's final castle with an exact total of 100 coins. Now this level has a major skip if you use the turret sticking up out of the lava to traverse across to the next set of platforms. Once you reach the Bowser fight portion of the level, immediately use the P-Wing that you got previously to skip it and it'll be transported right to the end of the game, beating it and ending the speedrun. I can't believe how long this speedrun is, and Zelda Cube did make a few mistakes, so someone could definitely beat this world record. The next game I'm going to talk about is New Super Mario Bros. 2 that was released on the Nintendo 3DS. Just recently, J-Dude claimed the any percent world record with a time of 26 minutes, 7 seconds, and 433 milliseconds. Unfortunately, he didn't have a capture card, so his footage isn't the best, but he was kind enough to leave a list of notable time saves, which I'll also go over with you. Nothing really happens until the World 1 Tower, where he uses very well-timed jumps off the snakes and the walls to traverse up the tower. He also uses the Warp Cannon Path in this level, so he can travel directly to the Mushroom World. This lets you completely bypass World 2. In level M1, you'll have to get a star so you can easily maneuver through the hordes of enemies. Level M2 is an underwater, auto-scrolling level, which is very easy if you get the gold flower power-up right off the start. Nothing crazy here, just stay to the right of the screen when you have to go through the pipe. The Mushroom World Ghost House is also quite easy, as you just need to know the right combination of doors and switches, which will lead you to the secret warp hidden above the hallway. This brings you to an alternate route, level MB, which is a vertical auto-scroller, so the only place you can really make up time is right at the very beginning, which is where J-Dude says he saved a lot of time actually. Once you complete this level, you can now take the Warp Cannon, which takes you directly to Flower World. Level F1 is only possible to traverse through quickly as Raccoon Mario, as you can hover for a split second, allowing you to jump a lot farther. J-Dude also uses a secret involving a flying block that takes you right to an alternate end of the level. This path leads you to level FA, where you need to use a combination of Raccoon Mario's flying ability and a star so you can get to the bottom of the map, bypassing a large platforming portion. The level then changes to an auto-scroller, so just stay to the right so you can enter the pipe on the first possible frame. The ending of this level then leads you directly to the next warp cannon, which sends you to World 6. With the help of the Raku Mario power-up, 6-1 is incredibly easy. The World 6 Ghost House is another level where J-Dude made up some time, as he was able to just barely fly over the ghost and press the switch without losing any momentum. 
Taking the alternate exit is also key, so you can go to the much shorter level 6A. Here you can literally fly through this entire level, and with the help of a star you won't have any issues. Level 6 tower is probably the hardest in the game, and doing a combination of flying and wall jumping is the only way of getting through it as fast as possible. Also avoiding the flames is super difficult, and Jadu theorizes he saved about 0.25 seconds on this section. The final level of the game is extremely difficult, as you have to get past many flame burners and dry bones while still maintaining Raccoon Mario. This is done by getting on the right burn cycle by flying just over the dry bones, which will actually just barely bump you through so you can immediately slip through a small area avoiding an unavoidable flame burner. Wow. From here, you have to traverse carefully to the end of the level to the final boss fight. It's easiest here to use the Golden Flower power-up to blast away Bowser's flames, where all you have to do then is knock Bowser off and press the final switch. Now, the final fight against Mega Bowser is relatively simple, as you just need to stay near the top of the screen, avoiding his swipes until you reach the next section. Keep repeating this while avoiding the flame breath until you reach a section where you can actually get to the giant switch before you can see it. Jadude says this in-game strat saved him about 1.5 seconds, giving him a world record 6 seconds faster than anyone else. The final game in this video is one you guys probably aren't expecting, but still is technically a handheld Mario game. And that's Super Mario Run for Android and iOS devices. Currently, the world record is held by Fu, with a time of 18 minutes and 16 seconds. He's held this for over a year, so I don't think there's any new strats in this game. Now, Super Mario Run is a bit different than traditional Mario games, as you are constantly running and you just have to tap the screen to jump. In this game, there are no warp pipes or alternative routes, so it really comes down to precise inputs and efficiency, along with ensuring you get every star to help you go a bit quicker. Now, I did see Fu do some sort of glitch in level 2-3, where he somehow got bubbled and got sent to the next pipe. But I don't really know why this happened, as he had the star, and I don't think that he could die, so once again, if you guys know, then leave it in the comments below. Now, don't be fooled, because this game isn't necessarily easy, and if you aren't careful, you'll almost definitely lose a lot of time in your run. I really don't want to focus on this game too much, as it is technically a phone game and isn't super popular in the speedrunning community, but I thought I should mention it just due to its interesting mechanics and fun gameplay. Alright, so that's going to be it for today's video, guys. I really hope you did enjoy this one. If you did, please leave a like, comment below what you thought about it, and of course, subscribe to my channel. Have a good day, guys, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.